Foot Clan, if you don't have the Ultimate Draft Kit yet, you need to go get it right now. There has never been a better time. Get ahead of the curve. Watch the 100-plus video player profiles. Read about the injury reports and coaching changes. You can take your toilet time up to the next level and dominate your draft. It'll come with all of our sleepers, breakouts, busts, values, and tiered rankings. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Tuesday, July 9th. Just a regular, ordinary day at the office. Oh, regular, yeah. Regular day. We Nothing have, different to see no, here. Nope, just a normal day sitting here hosting the show. All right, I'm on the other side of the desk. <laughs> if you're watching why is, at home, why? because life is, <laughs> life is funny sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just, I wanted to try something new on for a size. Oh, all right. This side of the day. I wanted to see the view from over here. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great. It's not bad. It's not um, bad. no, for those that are listening, everything's the same. For those that are watching on YouTube, I am in Mike's seat. Mike is in my seat for the normal, ordinary reason <laughs> that I knocked one of my teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm just vain enough <laughs> to not want to put it on display for the entire show. And Look, it's not just like a tooth hidden in the back. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Oh, no, uh, yeah, that's and fine. And it's not even one of the bottom teeth. No. It's, it's one of the big eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, originally, I didn't even think I was going to do the show because I just didn't have the heart. Yeah. And I also know that if I have a missing tooth, that I could be in the middle of an amazing analytical argument about a player that I'm obviously right about. Right. And right smack dab in the middle of that argument, there's no way either of you can take me seriously when you see this. So I'm taking or the that foot clan. They, they, they can't, they can't watch you give a take and think that you know what you're talking about. Like I'm taking one for the team here. Yeah. Cause your, your angle right now right. is right at it. I can see it and it's great. And uh, yeah, look, imagine Mater from the cars <laughs> movies and yeah. then, a little worse. Well, well, Just yeah. a little bit worse. Okay, I mean, don't do that to Mater. He's got all his teeth. He does technically <laughs> yeah, have all of just, his teeth. They're just gappy. Why a 40-year-old man just, Here, breaks a, get her done. just uh, breaks a tooth off? Yeah. No normal Nobody stuff. knows why. Yeah. Don't talk back to me again, brother. I mean, I Jason slugged me after uh, we talked about Ayuk and Debo from years ago, and he just walloped me in the face. Yeah. But so I decided I'm going to sit on the other side and hide from you out there on YouTube, which normally right now I'd be turning towards the camera and I can't do it. No, no, you can't. I cannot do it. Uh, we'll see. This should only take a few months to fix. <laughs> also, it sounds to me one silver lining, not in a lot of pain Two, I can drink through a straw with my mouth closed. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. Um, three. No, there's only two. Those are the yeah, only yeah. the only two that I got. You could um, try slurping spaghetti through the hole. I already told you I was rinsing my mouth out after I brushed my teeth yesterday and shot water right out my <laughs> mouth. I mean, just this shouldn't this shouldn't be happening to me. You can do cool tricks in the pool. <laughs> this is so stupid. Yeah, I do. I oh, you yeah. remember the, oh, that? Was, yeah. Like if you grew up in anywhere they had a pool when the when the teeth came out mm -hmm. the, for those front teeth you definitely did the uh I'm a, I'm a water fountain see the thing is is at this stage of my life there's not like a third set on the way there's not like another one coming in right. behind it i gotta figure this thing out oh and my f's sound really weird to me in my own head yeah you're fine. but you guys think i sound okay yeah. so they sound fine <laughs> that's all my son <laughs> keeps doing to me by the way my son just keeps going you know doing the lisp all day long but I'm here. All I, of us are here. We are breaking down the divisions. Uh, we're, we, what do we have? Eight divisional breakdown episodes on the way. Any news that happens? We don't have a lot of news today other than the fact that 
Dak Prescott had a boot and then he didn't have a boot and he's not hurt. Yeah, yeah. it was a very short lived uh, injured Dak season. It's about a week. Yeah, so I mean, it was freaky in the beginning, but uh, he's fine. Jason mentioned it at the top, the Ultimate Draft Kit. It's available right now on app, on the web. You can go get it, ultimatedraftkit.com. You can get the UDK. You can get the UDK Plus, get the draft analyzer, break down your team, get a grade, see all of our rankings, been making some tweaks and changes every single day, and um, and there you go. And I look, I already don't like what you guys are doing. <laughs> I don't like what you're doing. What? No one's doing nothing. Is that uh, is that Al Borland? Yeah, conniving. Yeah, he's just realized. Look, he thinks Josh, he can bribe his way to the solo cam and show off my Papa Josh is about as cheap as a person can be. Oh yeah, honestly, and, him and Al are he's cheaper than Al, but those yeah. are the two cheapest people I, I mean, know. Honestly, fifty percent or so of our lunch conversations turn into us with a wild idea of like just ridiculous, and then we go, wait a minute, Josh, how much? It was like we were talking. Uh, yeah, defining just, baldness, which Papa Josh is extremely bald, but he could do <laughs> the the skull. Yeah, hit the hit the little deucer cam button. I don't have a I don't have a button to change. Oh, they it. took yeah, you do. There you go. And, okay, All right. see how bald he is. And it was like okay, but he can grow the size. So how much for him over the course of a year to grow a skull? It and it's a number that will shock you that he's willing to do it. Yeah, he he will always he's willing to embarrass himself on the cheap, and so. Uh, Al's over there yeah, trying Al, to figure out a way to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might happen. All right, quick question of the day from Braden. We'll talk fantasy today. I believe Kyler Murray, this is from Braden in Michigan, I believe Kyler Murray is the best fantasy asset compared to Brock Purdy, or the better fantasy asset, sure. sorry. However, if Brandon Ayuk is already on my roster, is it worth grabbing the stack instead with Brock Purdy? I guess, simply put, what is the better advantage, a running quarterback or the stack? So Kyler, we've been talking about for a while. Of he just, he kind of right now is the absolute apex when it, when it comes to upside and getting quarterback value. Like I love Anthony Richardson. I think that he can finish as the number one quarterback. I don't know that Kyler can do number one, but Kyler can easily finish in the top five, and he is being drafted in the seventh round as the, as the QB eight. He is a fantastic value right now. So. I would still be taking Kyler uh, because I, I want the guy who has top five upside. Brock Purdy will probably surprise yet again. He's being drafted as the QB 12. But, I mean, we now have what like a year and a half of Brock Purdy. We don't have the two full years as a starter. But just him in that, the, uh, the system with Shanahan, he throws touchdowns at a very high level. That His percentage of attempts that turn into touchdowns is very high. He finished as the QB six this past year, so I think that Purdy will outperform. But it, it's but getting into that top five, maybe even top three, Kyler's the one who can do it, where Brock Purdy cannot. So I think for your team, it's it's better to go with Kyler. And, and there's there's values to having a stack, but that doesn't mean that that's in lieu of a of a running quarterback. You know what I mean? If you wanted to uh, take Marvin Harrison Jr., um, it, you know you can do that to stack with Kyler still. Kyler's at a really, really good value. It's not like the difference between a seventh round pick and a ninth round pick that Brock Purdy costs you. That you're not really saving some incredible asset in the seventh round, saying, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait a little later, um, and I'm gonna get a great seventh round pick." That's just I would rather have the better quarterback, which is Kyler. Yeah, you want the most points every week. If Kyler scores more points every week than. That's better than a stack. It's not like you get bonus points for having two teammates. Um, sometimes you get the correlation where a big game can help you, but if Kyler scores 30 that week and Brock scores 25, it doesn't help you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's interesting where they're going right now. I made a very big you did. blockbuster dynasty trade. In fact, on this show, I think I was mocking the fact that I've never waited so long for a for somebody to decide on a trade, I'd sent this thing through. It was like two weeks of waiting. And it was legit. Like, they were le legit thinking about this trade. But my old dynasty team... With no picks. With no picks for the next three years chose this year to trade Josh Allen for Kyler in a first-round pick. And historically, you have done 
well with this type of a maneuver. I believe you had, I had Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes yeah. and you traded him for uh, Herbert and a first right before Herbert broke out and it was like, I don't even know who you'd rather have between Mahomes and Herbert and then you got a first. And then you turned around and sold Herbert um, for another young quarterback and or, or for Josh Allen in a pick. You, you know, you can do these things at the right time and, and Kyler's value is low right now where him plus a pick next year Kyler will be seen among the the better quarterbacks it is an interesting year for Josh Allen in, in general with the receiving core it's not like I mean we all have him ranked number one I'd certainly rather have him on my roster but the value proposition right now for a team with no picks in dynasty I think it's there to go and get Kyler uh, and Purdy inherently has the risks that any pocket quarterback has so you know, quarterback six could become quarterback 13 right because you can just have Mike talked about the efficiency throwing touchdowns you know, that is not necessarily something that repeats all the time. And so the variability is very high there, whereas if Kyler's on the field, um, you know, we've seen him as the quarterback, what, two before in terms of uh, over the stretch of a season? For context of, uh, like, the league average for touchdown attempts or attempts turning into touchdowns, it's it sits at about 4.5% or so for league-wide. And Brock Purdy was... 7.6 two years ago and 7% this past year. So I like I will I will bet that Brock Purdy will have another efficient year like this, but if that drops to 6. Yeah, 6, six is a five, great number. Five and a half, six percent, then it's it's probably not enough. Yeah, I just looked left to try to figure Ooh, out the careful, time careful. the time of the show. Ah, yeah, we've got a clock over there that lets you lets you know. But it's to the right now. Mm. <laughs> that's that's be careful fun. and and then uh, brock purdy also you, people the, are going to be zapruder filming these things oh yeah this <laughs> my, you know the uh like a hockey player the efficiency of brock purdy if it comes down just a smidge you got to worry about the total attempts you know it's yes. you talk about how many touchdowns per attempts if you want to know who threw the ball the fewest times in the entire nfl last year it was the 49ers so that i mean they, they didn't even crack 500 attempts which is wildly low for 2024 all right, um, so we're in agreement then that you like Kyler over yeah. Purdy at that stage of the draft. Now, if Kyler's price goes up, you know there could be some buzz around. You know the McBride Harrison in camp. Um, they brought in Zay Jones. Uh, they have some weapons on offense that people like Connor. Um, if Kyler's a fifth round pick and Purdy's a ninth round pick, does that change the discussion enough? Uh, it like it, Richardson's in the fifth, right? Yeah, the, yeah. It, it would change it a lot. It's just unbelievable how much Jason's avoiding looking this direction. <laughs> and not on purpose. All right, here we go into the breakdown. Let's get divisional. All right, we are going to begin with the AFC North. Big boy. Oh yeah. Yeah, this division is wild, and we'll be looking at off-season changes, players, coaches, rookies. We'll look at what last last season's offenses were like, how they might function this year, and then give some takes on our win totals, who could win the division. Um, do we know? We normally make early predictions on these episodes. Yeah, usually we'll we'll throw out divisional winners. Yeah. Yep. I, I I not that I want to look back, but I assume I've always had them right. Yeah, don't yeah, look yeah, back. Don't worry about it. Okay, uh, Baltimore. Won the division thirteen and four, Cleveland eleven and six, Pittsburgh ten and seven because of course, and then Cincinnati at nine and eight. So every team above five hundred. First was, time since nineteen thirty five. Prepping for the show, I was blown away when I saw that the Steelers won ten games. Like just remembering that last year's felt like they lost about forty. Yeah, I mean they they, they weren't a very good team, and they won ten games. Tomlin, you and yeah. In division, they were five and one, right? The, the no, best they're in just division. what? I mean, they were a good team. The best in division of the best division in football. How good were they? This is the first time since 1935, 1935, mm. where you had an entire division finish with a winning record. Stats so nice, we got to share it twice. <laughs> yeah, um, Baltimore thirteen and four, lost to the Chiefs in the AFC title game. Last year they had a projected win total of ten and a half. This year, or, or um, yeah, ten and a half last year. This year it's at ten and a half. Opened at eleven and a half. 
they have a hard strength of schedule for 2024. What was your – so we spent so much of last offseason. Let's get this out of the way. Talking about Todd Monken and the offense and throwing the football and all of the positives, negatives, and in between. Uh, I guess it was mostly positives in the offseason hype. But now that the season's in the bag, we got to witness uh, Zay, Zay Flowers' uh, rookie season and then them figure things out at running back throughout the year with the Gus bus and the injury to Dobbins and, and such. What was your, like, overall reaction to the Baltimore Ravens offense? I think it was overhyped, but it did deliver on it. Like, uh, we wanted so much more than we even received. We were so greedy uh, with wanting this passing game to be super electric. It was still the best, in a lot of ways, it was the best Lamar has played. Um, you know, his his passing percentage and um, a lot of metrics were – were really, really good across the board. From a fantasy perspective, he was the quarterback four, which was the best he'd been in, you know, the previous three years. So it was really, really good, but, it, I, you know, this wasn't a fantasy football game-breaking uh, team like you hoped with Monk and coming over. But year two in this system, you know, you sh it should take a small step forward. I do have I do have a lot of worries about the offensive line. I don't think enough has been made about the Ravens you know, you get Derrick Henry, it's great. And it's like, oh, Derrick Henry finally gets to go play for a team with a good line. It's like, no, nope, nope, no, he doesn't because they had a good line last year. They do not this year. They lost, I think, three of their starters. And, um, you know, so you so you worry. But year two in the system, Derrick Henry is still an upgrade over, um, you know, Gus Edwards and, Jay, and uh, Justice Hill. The team feels a little weird to me. I mean, last year – the numbers in terms of, you know, what they put up on offense didn't match the fantasy football experience with Dobbins' injury, with Mark Andrews' injury. Um, Lamar went at 32 in last year's draft, so that was the quarterback four. Um, so, you know, Lamar had a good season. Zay Flowers was a value as the wide receiver 42. Uh, but not. I, I guess just for what they did on offense, it doesn't feel like they made as much of a contribution to the fantasy world. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. But I'm I'm with Jason that I have some excitement of year two, and look, it it can take guys some time to acclimate to an offense, but to finish as the quarterback for wow, Jay said the the highest or uh you know the highest completion percentage of his career. He was at eight yards an attempt. We didn't get the the super Madden football numbers on the ground where it was, you know, 821 rushing yards compared to the – you had the 1,200 and the 1,000 in those back-to-back -back years. And even when you compare the 821 yards this year in 16 games to last year in 12 games, 764, I think that there's, there's room that that goes back – up for Lamar uh so I I think that he's a he's appropriately going in drafts for what he can give you and with all the risks that he carries he only had three games of 70 plus rushing yards last year uh he we didn't see as many ceiling rushing games not as many design runs um so that's something to pay attention to as his career goes on Henry like you said last year we were going into the season with them as the fifth ranked offensive line this year going in as PFF's 25th ranked Yay. ranked as they lost um, Zeitler and Moses and Simpson. That just means more scrambling. Go, go. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. It's a very difficult division with a very difficult schedule with an older running back. You know, this is a team that has been dealing with carousel at the position at, of running back. And uh, Henry's health will play a big part in how the season goes. Because we're going to be right back. If if anything happens to him, like you don't – Justice Hill and the waiver wire and that, you know, they'll be signing more veterans again. Yeah, more more than likely. And if uh, Rasheen Ali is there as well. But for Derrick Henry, I, I you can't argue with what has happened to the offensive line. But Baltimore, just like Pittsburgh, it's one of those teams that you believe in the franchise. You believe that double-digit wins should happen for them they'll they'll be contending for the division and then for Derrick Henry specifically a good friend of the show Scott Barrett had recently sent a tweet out 
talking about Derrick Henry's splits and wins and losses, which we we all know. Yeah, we brought it up a lot. But it's like here's the actual the, the numbers. In wins from 2018 to 2023, Derrick Henry has averaged over 20 fantasy points per week and then 12 in a loss. And if this is a team that is winning more than they're losing, like that's that's humongous for what Derrick Henry will bring. One of the things that we didn't get a lot of last year was Mark Andrews, obviously, with the injury. Isaiah Likely was involved towards the back half of the season. Andrews made it back for the playoff game. But before the injury, he was on pace for 81, 984, and 11. I'm looking at this schedule to start the year for Baltimore, and it's brutal defensively what they're going up against. They're going to be in Kansas City to kick out the season. They're going to face the Las Vegas defense, which ended the year on fire. Then they're going to go into Dallas against the Dallas defense. Then they're going to play Buffalo's defense. Yeah, so that is tough. Like we try not to overemphasize strength of schedule over the course of the whole year, but we do pay attention to this to the top of the year when you're making a difference you know, a, a decision in your draft about a player like Lamar. Um, is that as intimidating to you as it is to me, That, that those first four matchups? It's not great, Bob, but I, I, it'll be all right. Like, for who Lamar is and the fact that, yeah, these are pretty high-powered defenses, but that's a lot of really high-powered offenses that could force – so you, you could force some shootout opportunities here too. I brought up the – fact that Zay Flowers might be a bust compared to his ADP a couple weeks ago. I saw the feedback. People were very, very unhappy. Yeah. Uh, strong disagreement. And we talked about the fact that he has so many downfield targets, so many behind the line of scrimmage targets. Um, there were only a handful of players like that, the Rondale Moore style. Uh, a lot of people's feedback was that they just believe Zay Flowers is a complete player that's going to make a huge step forward and you know, you look at the wide receiver room, and he has to be a go-to receiver for them. Yeah, it's 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 a good thing to point out how good he is, uh, right? I don't I don't think you're which I was not. I didn't think he was a bad player. No, right, exactly. He's a very good player. He's also very young in the sense that you know, going to year two, you expect him to take a step forward. He will be the number one wide receiver for this team, but he might not be the number one pass catcher because. Mark Andrews is still the guy. I know we've got like name fatigue with him, and he's been injured a couple times over the last couple of years, so he's let fantasy football managers down. But this is the, the main pass catcher in the offense, and you see that in the splits. With Mark Andrews on the field, without Mark Andrews on the field, it was a, a, a different world. 22% of the targets with Mark Andrews on the field, that's for Zay Flowers. When Mark Andrews was gone, it was up at 28. That's a huge and, difference for fans. What is his ADP right now? Uh, Zay Them Flowers. Top, Zay Flowers. I'm sorry. Top of the fifth wide receiver, 25. Okay. I. You know. Yeah, He's, that's right he, on the edge for me because Zay Flowers last year with Andrews missing time was the wide receiver 30. So, you know, 25 seems doable if the season goes the right way. If he can get into the end zone, I, I I'm in agreement that his ADP. I don't like it, but he is such a. He is such a different, difficult archetype of successful rookie, year two, still a number one guy. To to bet against that is like those are those are signs that we look for. But I think that in between, you know, reading in between the lines, there's enough for me to believe that I'm gonna I'm willing to be wrong with Zay Flowers. Is how I'm gonna approach it. All right, one last thing I want to look at before we move on in the division is just uh, wh where's Lamar's current ADP. Uh, I'm seeing him at 39 overall. QB three. Is that what I'm we seeing got? QB four. Okay. Which well, is what, what he about was five. He was drafted as the QB four last year. He's up three. No, he's down. He's down from last year's ADP. From what I'm seeing, do you have that up? Uh, we normally have that in the show doc here. I just don't see it's, it. It's, I think it's a it's a tie. You also like he's from where he was going last year. Uh, no, no, I'm saying a tie between yes, him, Lamar him and, and Mahomes. I are, see. Are tied. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting with that beginning season schedule. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more of this ferocious AFC North. All right, moving on from Baltimore. We're going into the 11-6 and six Cleveland Browns who uh, lost to the Texans in the wild card round. 
they managed to outperform their win total from last year, which was nine and a half, got to 11, despite four different quarterbacks taking snaps. This well, year, they were more because of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Getting Flacco in there, winning some games. Uh, it's not a bad point. <laughs> this year, their projected win total is eight and a half, down a game. They have a very difficult strength of schedule, third hardest in the league. They also have a healthy Deshaun Watson to start the year. So it was a weird season for Cleveland. They dealt with major injuries at the quarterback position. Nick Chubb off the field had the excitement at the end of the year for fantasy with Joe Flacco and Amari Cooper, the big game in what, uh, semifinal week? Mm -hmm. But um, last year they were ninth in points per game, sixth in pace of play. Um, number one in yards per game in terms of the defense. So if, if you take and you look at that Lamar schedule that I told you to begin the year, right, and then you mix in the fact that none of those – they got to play Cleveland's number one ranked defense two times, right? Then they got to play the Steelers a couple times in division. It um, These teams normally kind of eat themselves. Right. But last year they all ended up above 500 beating other teams. You know, Cleveland is a team that I, I do believe in. I think I've been pretty vocal about that this offseason. I think Kevin Stefanski is an outstanding coach. I think what he did last year was coach of the year worthy in overcoming, like, who who's the linchpin of your entire offense? You know, this would be like, you know, back in the uh, the Tennessee, when Tennessee was winning ball games, and you lose Derrick Henry, and then you lose Ryan Tannehill, and then you go 11-6, and six, and you make the playoffs. Um, Nick Chubb was the centerpiece of what they did. He pieced it together. Their defense obviously held them up. They added um, Jerry Judy this offseason, which I know in the fantasy world, that's not been a fun ride. In the real life world, it's not been a fun ride, but he's still a young, talented player. Jerry Judy is I a, like that you separated them, and you're like, well, they were looking well, right. The I did separate them, and then I decided. <laughs> but, no, he's a better player, I think, in reality than he has been for fantasy. Yeah, but he's been a disappointment in both. He's just yes. he is. It's more in fantasy because of the expectations. Yeah, and if you compare him to Elijah Moore, he's going to look real good, uh, both in fantasy and in in the real world. So I guess th that's my point is that he's going to help their team. Yeah, I do he, believe that he should be a help to their team. He's not someone that I think we would recommend drafting. Uh, this you know you look at the games that Deshaun Watson played. It's funny because we went into last season going, I really don't know what to make of this passing game because we don't know what to make of Deshaun Watson. And now we're we have no new information. You know, it's like he played a handful of games, got injured, looked good some games, looked awful some games. Is the shoulder fine? You know, it, I'm more focused on the the other pieces because I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push my chips in on Deshaun Watson. I don't think I need to. Uh, but when it comes to Amari Cooper, David Njoku, those those are two important pieces for fantasy where you've got to, uh, you know pick your poison do you believe in both of them they obviously both showed out last year they were they were very very good you watch the film and you say hey these guys are hey, great hey so how do you mother for me how do you mother for me uh these guys are great players and so now it's just can Deshaun Watson get, yeah, get them the ball a bet on them is a bet on Watson to some degree and you know Watson 11 total starts the last two years five top 12 finishes in those starts his completion rate has been terrible in Cleveland compared to what it was in Houston he has been running the football, and and their the PFF grade on their line coming into the season at least is fourth. Yeah, yeah, they they have majorly improved it, so maybe that'll help Watson. What we saw with Watson on the field last year was, you know, wh what he's been his whole career. He'll scramble around, he'll run a little bit. You know, he's not like Flacco, who's just gonna you know get the ball and get it out quick, and that really helped David Njoku. You know, he'll hold on to the ball and push the ball down the field to Amari Cooper. When you have those five full games with Cooper, he had a 17-game pace of 1,600 yards and seven touchdowns, whereas David Njoku with Deshaun Watson had a 17-game pace of 600 yards and three touchdowns, much worse in his splits with Flacco. And I worry about – like, I think Njoku showed that he needs to be a, a an integral part of this offense, but I also – think some of it is the play style of Watson who doesn't fit as well with the tight end position here as he does with you know pushing the ball downfield look I, I think if you don't want to bet on Watson that is a prerogative of yours in fantasy like that's fine 
I think if you don't want to have to have your chips in on him being successful and you just don't want to deal with it, that's a logical conclusion. I just don't think we saw very much. I think the samples are small. And then when he did play, he also played injured at times yes, last year. He did. We have a new offensive coordinator in Ken Dorsey coming over. He's talked about the scheme changing to be something where they open it up a little bit more, throw the ball downfield. Cooper does it better than anyone down there. Jerry Judy can get downfield, and Njoku can get into the seam and get downfield as well. He talked about Cam's MVP season. He talked about Josh Allen's development. Um, Dorsey did in his introductory press conference. And look, you you just have to – you have no choice if you're Cleveland than to aspire to – uh, those goals of getting this offense rolling because their defense is so good that if if Watson was 80% of his former self, this is a team that will win 11 games or more this year again because they did it on the – they won games with uh, Dorian Thompson-Robinson. They won games with – what's the other guy I'm forgetting about other than Flacco? There was, oh, there was another – who was there? It Was it P.J. Walker? Was it Walker? Walker. It was, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, it was P.J. Walker. I mean – they won games with bad quarterback play beyond Watson last year, and oh, um, oh and, guys, and the guy who had a this guy was got a plan. <laughs> Drif, Jeff Driscoll. Wait, so was it five? Yeah, yeah, it was five. Five quarterbacks. Excuse me. I've got a plan. Coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski. <laughs> so no Flacco as a backup this year, and they added Deonta, uh, or I'm sorry, they added Jerry Judy to the offense. Uh, Jameis Winston's the new backup there, so you get the same thing as Flacco. If if Watson goes down, yeah. you might be plus in yep. the fantasy world. And they did. They added – so the running back room is worth a pretty big discussion of uh, Nick Chubb, the, the catastrophic knee injury in week two, the same knee that he had exploded also as a collegiate athlete. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's sad. It sucks. It's unfortunate. But the team did keep him on board. So he's doing all the rehab stuff with them. We're seeing more and more video. I am – look, Nick Chubb is going in the back of the eighth, running back 29. I am more of the approach of I'm just – I'm betting against him. And Jerome Ford, who is the presumed starter, is going in the 11th round, at least presumed by me, at week one. And he's the RB41. And last year, he, he looked like a – he looked like he belonged on a football field. He was which a is, lunch pay a, uh, running which, back. He'd which show like, up and get the work done. Exactly. So it's like it. He was not inept. He was he was very capable. I mean, he was a top twenty four running back eleven times. Like this, he gave you really good production off the waiver wire. So I look for that to continue. But where are you guys making? bets anywhere on Nick Chubb drafting any exposure to I, him I am betting against Nick Chubb um, I'm, I'm with you Mike I I'm gonna take the side of history age the specific injury you know sometimes later in a career a guy's just built different and Adrian Peterson comes back yeah, as the it, number one running back and, and if Nick a guy Chubb, could do that it's Nick Chubb yes but I'm still gonna bet against it because the only example we have really is that Adrian Peterson of like the late career incredible first year back from and that was more of a simple ACL this was a pretty catastrophic injury where when it first happened we were like will he play again yeah. now he's looking good and I, I think ADP wise he'll continue to rise as we get closer unless it's official that he's like going to be put on the pup but the more videos that you see of him working out you're going to be more in they brought in Deonta Foreman but also keep in mind they lost Kareem Hunt here that was four percent of their targets 26 percent of their carries and nine rushing touchdowns was, you know, Kareem Hunt. So I'm I'm in on Ford in those double digit rounds. Uh, so Judy in the twelfth, thumbs no, up or thumbs down? No, thank you. Ask me, Judy in the seventeenth. <laughs> no, because you're gonna say no. No, thank you. I think oh. Judy's gonna be very involved. I, Jason, are you just are you just mad at him? Yes. Yeah. He was like. Yes, he is. Yeah, I loved him you coming loved out of college. Him. Loved him. How about now? College. No, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm in on Injoku at his ADP. I'm in on. I'm in on. Not Watson, not Chubb. Ford is fine as a flyer, and this is a weird team because they, they they're probably going to win a lot of ball games. Yeah, I, but you're going to have to piece together the running back room, receivers outside of Cooper, and then the bet on Injoku. Look, he's my he's one of my favorite options because he's an eighth round pick. 
So when you get towards the end, I'd rather have him and the chance that the form we saw at the end of last year, you get some of that than I would just going in on a basement guy like a Dalton Schultz um, or, you know, somebody else. It will be super frustrating if they don't continue using him the way that they finished. Cedric Tillman, by the way, should be a starting outside wide receiver if you're looking in deeper leagues. Yeah. Um, he's going to be outside along with Amari Cooper with Jerry Judy in the slot. Mike, you said that I like mean, I shouldn't just, have said it. No, no, no. I, you know, trust me. I, I think it's always worth mentioning these auxiliary guys. It's just for for this team and their their makeup. That seems like a really long shot. And on top of that, you, you know, year one we try to see some, you know, peripheral numbers like tar targets per route run and yards per route run, and they were both atrocious for Cedric Tillman. It's just it's not a very inspiring profile. I heard tarts. Do you like mm. a good morning tart? Yeah, like a pop tart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if that counts as a tart, I'm in. Brown sugar. Uh, that's don't a, don't come at brown me. Brown sugar is number one. Yeah, what? No, oh, nobody's yeah. Gonna, oh yeah. Who's coming oh, at yeah. you for taking oh, the, uh, probably, the unanimous number one? Yes, yeah, probably some, like some strawberry people. Strawberry is fine. Blueberry's there. fine. Brown sugars. They're all good, but brown, s'mores. Brown sugar is the best. That's the only one I don't like. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, but uh, I don't you know. You wouldn't eat that. I mean, don't hear what I'm not saying. Well, I would eat that. Do you go, are you a popped or an unpopped man? Wait. So popped. usually, yeah, oh, I know like what he's toasted. saying, toasted. Oh, yeah. That's look, called popped? Toasted. Why do you think they call it a pop tart? Because yeah, it pops pop. out. No, I yeah. get it. I get it. <laughs> a toaster tart. It's not. Toasted, greater sign untoasted, but also longer <laughs> to mouth. And that's the problem. <laughs> so oftentimes what I'll do, you know, pro move. You open that package. There's two in there. You pop you one in the toaster. You toast one and you eat and one? And I eat one right away. I'm a toasted eat all the while time, you wait, man. Baby. And you butter that toasted Pop-Tart when it comes out. And no, if you don't, don't do this. I've heard. upgrade your life. You butter it. Oh, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. I opened up. Well. What's this thing running, like 750 calories? Who cares? <laughs> I opened up a can here, Mike. Wow. It's a box. <sighs> do you butter your donuts? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. They're fried. Um, all right. Pittsburgh, ten and seven. We talked about it. Lost the Buffalo in the wild card round. Was projected to win eight and a half games. Of course, they out kicked that. Um, eight and a half is the win total this year. We are rebuilding the quarterback position. We're taking another shot at it because last year, this was the twenty fifth slowest or the twenty fifth in pace of play. 28th in points per game, 25th in total yard, 30th in passing percentage. Ugh. 13 total passing touchdowns on the year. Wow. Wow. Dead For last. A ten win yeah. team. Yeah. They only threw 13 touchdowns. That seems impossible. Dead last in neutral pass rate. 31st in explosive pass plays. They were hard to watch and won 10 games. Brutal. Yeah, it was brutal. And you even had struggles early season struggles by Najee Harris and the call for Jalen Warren to be more involved and quarterbacks like Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph trading off opportunities they lose Deontay Johnson this offseason who was a stalwart in the wide receiver room I'm sure he I mean he's probably like cool I mean this team didn't pass and it's okay um, they got Arthur Smith now yeah they they picked up Arthur picked up Arthur Smith um Russell Wilson Justin Fields discount opportunities at the quarterback position for the Steelers. They added a couple of, you know, I would say better quarterbacks than they had on the Chiefs. Yes, yes. for as fun and easy as it is to just take cheap shots at Russell Wilson, he's a better quarterback than what they had. And I, I do feel like the Pittsburgh fans are ferocious, proud, all the things you well, should be. They got be, those towels. You should be proud. And they're, of, and they're terrible. If you have this franchise, you should be very proud of your franchise. But I think sometimes it gets lost that like there is this, like yes, they were ten and seven, so they want me to get on here and say you're amazing, you're the best team. We we are a fantasy football show. We watch every game. You hurt us physically when you made us watch <laughs> you play football last year. So that they were not fun to watch. You shook your head with the wins. And they're not going to be fun to watch again. It's That's not. where is that where you're at? Yeah, one hundred percent. This is a team. Glad that, you're saying it, not me. Yeah, and no, they're not going to be fun to watch. Uh, the, Russell Wilson was not fun to watch last year, but they'll win games just like they did last year, which means 
that that becomes a little bit more difficult for a switch at quarterback. You know, I I've been of the mindset that I think Justin Fields has talent uh, that needs to be molded, and if he's at a good franchise and given the opportunity, I think he can do special stuff. But the truth is, Russell Wilson's the starter. He's beating him uh, at the you know so far in the early camps. He's been the better player, and they have made it very clear that it that it's Russell Wilson is the starter, and then they can have a competition down the line. Um, if they win games, Russ isn't going to be replaced, and they can win games without throwing a bunch of touchdowns. Uh, are one of the other frustrating offenses to watch last year was the Atlanta Falcons, run by Arthur Smith, no three wide receiver sets, get the tight ends on the field, and run the ball a ton, and you're going to have that here, and it's going to be. Boring and successful. Not for fantasy, though. 26 touchdowns. That's what Russell Wilson did last year in Denver. That would be double the passing touchdowns in Pittsburgh if he could pull that off. He'll yeah, do it without that, Deontay that's Johnson. That's a lot better. Um, he'll have Roman Wilson, a rookie wide receiver, getting involved on the other side of George Pickens, who I think is primed for a great season with the upgrade at quarterback. He did so much with so little last year. George Pickens, um, you know, I think we all really like the draft price right now. I like him. I, I think he's he, he's primed for a, a a true breakout campaign. Eight targets per game last year with a, when Deontay Johnson was off the field. That's a that's a nice baseline. And just the way that – like the, the way that the Arthur system, I expect it to run is like – Roman, I like Roman Wilson, the player. I think that, like his career, he will have a good career. It was, I think it was a good draft pick, but he's not one of the rookie wide receivers that I'm targeting in redraft. Uh, we've seen some Steelers, I would say the most of Steelers rookie wide receivers take some time before they really get acclimated into becoming a a, a go to part of the team, and you just have so many of of Arthur's plays being the two wide receiver sets. And he he's still a rookie, and while it's you know kind of laughable to think about Van Jefferson as a starting wide receiver, someone like that, a veteran, I think will play in front of Rowan for the majority of the season. I think you could be right. I think and Roman I, Wilson and, like, will and, need some time. And I don't want to draft Van Jefferson. No. And, also, I, and Cordero Patterson is there, so who knows what – Tricks Arthur has up his sleeves for him. We'll talk running backs momentarily. I'll just mention Pickens. The the cumulative stats last year were great on what opportunities he had. The week-to-week -week experience was awful. He was, right. he was a D consistency. 35% of the time he was giving you a good week. Now, if you caught one of those weeks, you probably won it because they were huge. But you're looking for consistency from George Pickens this year. They obviously believe in him having Deontay Johnson shipped off to Carolina the last part of the conversation is going to be Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, and the running game. Something that Arthur Smith, even though he picked personnel that we didn't always like, was very successful with. Um, they're coming into the season with a much higher graded offensive line than they did last year. They drafted offensive line. They, if you are a Najee Harris, Jalen Warren manager, are you going to be singing Arthur Sith, Sith's <laughs> praises? Uh, probably not. I'll bet. I'll bet it's a frustrating combination. And Cordero Patterson will be used. I mean, he was used on the goal line ahead of Bijan Robinson sometimes last year. So it, it will get frustrating. I do think where Najee is going, and you could make the same exact argument for Warren, who's uh, you know going around the same spot. They're okay draft picks. This is going to be a team I, that I like Najee. The, the, it's going to be a team that wins games, that is running out the clock, that improve their offensive line. So yeah, Najee is fine. This isn't a sexy See, I like pick Warren that's going to be a top two five. Rounds. I like Warren more two rounds later, just because of explosiveness. Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like they're very equal in their fantasy production that I'm expecting this year, and I feel like I could get a discount on Warren. But I, I've heard you guys both say you like Najee a lot, so I feel like I still think Najee's going to get the majority of the opportunities, and if that's the case, you know, especially if you get you're looking at this archetype of someone that can get goal line opportunities. I think when you get down in the red zone, he'll be more valuable for fantasy. Obviously, uh, reception is worth more, and so if they think Warren is the better pass catcher and he is in on you know, those it was, plays, then yeah, sure. It was 53% of snaps for Najee last year, 48% for Warren. 
So Najee had the advantage. You're right about the goal line. The passing game, probably more Warren, more explosiveness from Warren. I just like the discount, but maybe at that point in the draft, you know, seventh, ninth round, maybe the difference is not moving the needle for you. Yeah. Well, one last thing I want to bring up, uh, going back to Van Jefferson potentially being that two, you know, that sure. second wide receiver and two wide receiver sets. I, I just, this is just fascinating to me. And maybe you guys saw this, felt it, and this isn't surprising at all. Allen Robinson yeah. played 17 games <laughs> last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Allen Robinson played 72% of the offensive snaps. This was a guy on the field all the time. That is very surprising. I mean, yeah. Well, you saying that because he didn't get 300 yards? <laughs> I mean, they are fine having a wide receiver out there to uh, block and help the run game and slow things down. And so, yeah, Roman Wilson, I I, I hate your take because I'm I think sorry. it's right. Oh. I love Roman Wilson, and I think he's going to come along slow and they're going to leave Van Jefferson out there. Frymuth? I, I like Frymuth. He's, if you have completely punted, like ADP-wise, if I'm remembering right, it feels like David Njoku is the kind of the – the end of where I feel like this player should be involved. The Muth is going in the 11th, the tight end 16. So he's just like you, if you punt, I think that he is an okay target. He's the number two target in this offense. I mean, I, I, I think it'll, be. I think it'll be clear that he is the second target behind George Pickens. It's not going to be Van Jefferson and probably not going to be Roman Wilson. Allen Robinson ran more routes for this team than Debo Samuel <laughs> ran last year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What in the world? Yeah. Yeah, that was a tough team to watch. We'll take a break. Come back with the Bengals. What do you think Allen Robinson is doing right now? Running. Just sprints. Just wind sprints. Just preparing. He's got to be in good, good cardio shape. I'll bet he does a lot of push-ups, too. He's not on, a, all, he's not on a roster, right? All the blocking. Um, I think he is. Is he on a roster? I Kyle, I, I know you follow him closely. He's a giant. <laughs> no, he's not. Giant? Yeah. No, he's, he's huge. <laughs> <laughs> it's just he is, uh, he he's a is, monster. Yeah, he's, he's in that. He's a giant. And that's he's like, what? what that's what? a team he could make. I know. That's what that's I'm saying. That's a team he could make. He looked out there at all the NFL rosters yeah. and said, all right, which one could I make the cut? Oh, gosh, look at the Giants. Let me go there. Oh, man. The, the fall of Allen Robinson was – so insanely fast. Precipitous. Yes. Like, it was, this guy is going to be an elite he, fantasy player for years. He, and No. He fooled Sean McVay. I will always remember that. <laughs> he fooled Sean McVay. He sure Ipso did. Ipso facto, he fooled yeah. me. He sure did. I mean, he played <laughs> at 29 last year. There's. You guys remember Mike Evans, my my guy? That's yeah, what I, yeah. I like to yeah, no, remember. Yeah. No, that's good. Um. All right, uh, Cincinnati, 9-8 and eight last year. They had an 11-and-a-half win total injury to their starting quarterback. Uh, undermine that. Ends up 9-8. and eight. Still a lot of fight from this team. This year, the projected win total, 10-and-a-half, which uh, that's – is that tied with Cleveland? No, 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 it's ahead of Cleveland. So right now, in order of the win totals in Vegas, you have – Baltimore and Cincinnati tied at ten and a half, mm -hmm. and then what? Cleveland at nine and a half, Pittsburgh at eight and a half. Uh, all right, getting back to how it worked out last year, they made it work on offense. Jake Browning took over for Joe Burrow. A lot of short targets, lowest a dot in the NFL, slow pace of play. Um, you know they they. They got it working, but it just wasn't what we expected from this team because without Joe Burrow, you're just not the same. They do get a better strength of schedule this year uh, because they get a fourth-place schedule. Are you expecting just a bounce-back type of season from Cincinnati? No more Joe Mixon, obviously, in the running game, but with you know the guy behind center. I, I would say I – Yes, it, I I would put it in the expecting. I mean, it, Joe Burrow still has it. This this team it was so strange last year, and when you I mean, you would have these games of 
of Jamar Chase. Like every, it felt like every target Jamar Chase was getting was was at the line or behind the line of scrimmage, and they were just saying, "Please, Jamar Chase, do make something. a play." Yeah, it, I mean, they were so depleted of T. Higgins being banged up and missing games, and and not having a franchise quarterback. So they, it's it, they were doing the best that they could with with what they had, and to have that that level of success and now you're currently sitting at or you will be back to full strength I should say so I would yes I would expect it yeah I mean this is just if if Joe Burrow's wrist is fine I think this is a massive ba bounce back I, I believe that the weapons here are undervalued and I mean that almost across the board I think T Higgins is undervalued uh you you can't really I mean when when Chase is in the first round okay but he could be the wide receiver one I think he's in that discussion and he's not really. It's it's CD and Tyreek. Mm -hmm. And Joe Burrow has been great. You you got to remember, Joe Burrow tore up his calf in training camp last year and barely made it back to the field for week one. The, he, he Joe Burrow played two months of football. Listen to this. The first month of football, coming back off that calf injury, here was his 17-game pace over that first month. He would have thrown 3,000 yards and rushed for 12, 12 you don't think there was a calf problem there? That's a 17, not an average per game. For 12 he yards? Would have, he, would have, he would have rushed for 12 yards over 17 games on that average over the first month. He was getting rid of the ball. The, yeah, like, because he, he, was not, he, he wasn't not. He didn't look right. But then the second month when that calf actually healed, he was on pace for 5,000 passing yards, 265 rushing yards. It was Joe Burrow that we're used to seeing. And, and so you're getting a discount right now on the fact that he was injured and looked bad through injury last year. But the two previous years, this is a guy, you know, you talk about pocket passers, and you're like, well, you've got to throw for 4,500 yards, and you've got to throw for near 35 touchdowns. It's really hard to do, you you know, betting on that. Well, the, both the previous two seasons, he basically did that. 4,634, two years b before, and 44, 75, and 35 touchdowns the previous season. So I think one of the interesting things about Baltimore is, or I'm sorry, about Cincinnati. <laughs> Let's talk about Baltimore Speaking again. Speaking of golf. <laughs> um, I think one of the interesting things about Cincinnati is they may be the most primed for fantasy football value in the division. Yes. And I think they're going to finish dead last in the division. Really? They, that's where I'm at. I, I think they are the perfect makeup. You're, you're talking about a division right now where they were 24th in points per game given up. 31st in yards per game given up. They were a terrible defense last year. They're in a division where Pittsburgh was 7th in points per game. Um, Cleveland was number one in yards per game. Baltimore was number one in points per game, 6th in yards per game. They, you're, you're talking about three of the best defenses in football, and then you have the Cincinnati Bengals defense. And I'm saying that as a positive for fantasy. We know what this is like. We know that, you know, it's one of the reasons why, um, you know, we, we saw a lot of excitement and success when Kansas City's defense wasn't as good as it used to be. Yeah, that was great. And Cincinnati's a situation where I think they're going to give up a lot of points, which means that Burrow, Higgins, Chase, whoever fi they figure out at running back, Chase Brown, Zach Moss, and even Mike Kosicki, Jermaine Burton as a kind of deep, deep flyer as a rookie with no Tyler Boyd, I think that they are – they're primed for fantasy opportunities – but I don't think that they are going to compete in this division. I don't. Hmm. I I I think they will. I mean, the win, I think they won't. Well, <laughs> the sports books think they will. That's fair. Ten and a half. Um. But you know, it's just interesting because they they do not have the defense that the other three teams in the division do. And I think as, at least with Pittsburgh, like if you can win on defense in Pittsburgh and run the football, you already know the recipe. Like we we should have talked about that a little bit in Pittsburgh and the fact that. If you're that good on the defensive side of the ball and Arthur Smith gets to run, can you imagine what Arthur Smith would have done if Atlanta's offense, if Atlanta's defense was great? They would never throw the ball. I don't know if they would. So, you Even know. The happiest person of all time. <laughs> yeah, Russ can hand the ball off. So, um, I don't know. They're, they're an interesting situation. No Joe Mixon, so they'll have to figure it out with Zach Moss and Chase Brown. So, looking at Zach Moss, it is – it is extremely difficult for me to wrap my head around what is happening here because you have a team that is projected for over 10 wins. They will be a high-powered offense. They have had pretty good success here fantasy-wise 
uh, from from Joe Mixon, who to Joe Mixon to me is just he's he's fine. Like I, he to me is he is not a difference making running back. Like there's just there's so few of those, and yet despite that, he's had like a a really really strong fantasy career. Last year, what was he? I mean, last year he was one of the top finishers. Yeah, he was the running back five. Five. And so now he he is gone. Chase Brown doesn't profile as someone who will see a huge uptick in work. Last year, from week 13 on, he was getting nine opportunities a game. I think he will. Chase Brown? Yeah, I, I think Chase Brown will nine. get a lot more. He'll, he'll get more than nine, but he's – Zach Moss is uh, – Zach Moss is brought in to be the main guy, and Zach Moss is a trependi- tremendous pass blocker. But I looked at – the historic was that trependous? No, Tre- he, he caught it. Yeah, he caught it. But he that, caught it. But that word's awesome. T- you like trependous? trependous? Oh yeah. Is that like a? I'll make a note. Trapeze-related yeah. word? No, it's just like it's it's triple. Yeah. Is it's that a player? Trependous. That's not a. Oh, it's trip trependous. Yeah. yeah. So oh, looking three at, times as good. Okay. All the running backs drafted since 2014. Guys who have finished, uh, at they have at least one finish in the top 24. So since 2014, at least one top 24 finish. That's 71 players. Now, guys who have done that, the, f- the first time they ever finished as a top 24 running back in season five, of those 71 players, it is three guys. Three guys. Two of them are uh, undrafted players in J.D. McKissick and Raheem Mostert, and the other one was James White, which is like, Okay, that makes sense to me. These guys were drafted later in the NFL. Turns out that they they kept earning more and more and more. You're talking about the, this in the context of Chase Brown's odds of. I'm, no, I'm talking about Zach Moss. Gotcha. Zach Moss, who is the projected starter, but it's year five. He hasn't given us a top twenty four finish. And looking at what? Oh, the, he's nothing like those other three guys you you named either. Exactly. Like profile wise, I'm saying all of the things mixed together in trying to put together what is the 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 true profile of Zach Moss, there is so many things that say this should work. If he gets if he gets 60-plus percent or whatever of, of the work for the Bengals, it should work. Absolutely no problem. And yet, historically, you're talking about this would be this would be an unmanned territory. Yeah, that complete we have not, outlier. We have not seen it happen. So I am just like, I don't – I don't know what to do with Zach Moss. I think I'm in. I, I'm pretty sure I'm in, but it's it's hard. See, that's to... what trap endus is. He's a trap. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a trap. That is a trap endus. <laughs> that's but, interesting, though. I mean, the, that that he'd have to be an outlier to deliver a, in what seems to be laying in front of him, which is why I'm uh, I've been more bullish on Chase Brown and moved him up in recent weeks. Yeah. the 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 thing about the trap of drafting Zach Moss is that sometimes you know you got those leaves laid over that you know eight foot hole, and you you you're gonna be stuck. This is like. You might roll your ankle. There's like a ditch, and they yes, put leaves yeah, over because it. it's a too, ninth. Yeah. It's a ninth round pick. It's like, oh dang it! I fell in the trap. Now oh. I'm walking out because it's like <laughs> whatever. You just cut him and move on. That's fair. You're not having to spend up on Zach Moss ninth round. So is he? He is so wild. I mean that that'd be wild if the starting running back from a ten and a half projected Bengals team is not in the top eight rounds. That's just yeah. That would be wild if if come August that's the case. I I'd yeah, be it, shocked if that was the case. And Chase Brown is in the eleventh round, so he's you know even more free. If you want to take the shot there, I am I am taking the shot on Zach Moss because I think transactionally what the team has done, what they're paying for Zach Moss, you know they had the opportunity to use Chase Brown last year, they didn't, but they had mix. And I, I, I also scheme wise, scheme fit, running from shotgun. Zach Moss fits the Bengals really, really well. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on the Zach Moss side. My guy, my my guy. I've always loved. Always, you've loved him f- since the day he was born. Man, did I love him in college so fast. Yeah, you always thought he was speedy. Um, and, and just a quick, Jason, you mentioned T. Higgins as being undervalued. I agree. I am one of those many out there who feels personally victimized by what T. Higgins has done the last couple of years. But if if he were somehow to if he played sixteen games out of seventeen out of seventeen, <laughs> he would. I'm saying like I'm not even giving him a full season. I know you have saying, to aim high with just him. Just give him sixteen games, he will. He'll end up being a tremendous value. All right, um, 
Well, it's July. It's July 9th, so we should probably just rank our division and talk about who wins it. I'm taking the exact same order as last year. I think it's Baltimore, right. Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. I am taking Baltimore to win it, but I've got Cincy second, Cleveland third, and the Pittsburgh Steelers fourth. <sighs> I think that's how I lean to with Jason. Did you see the – did we mention the, the Steelers opening schedule? Uh, I don't think we mentioned it. It is uh, on the road for an Atlanta revenge yeah, game. Yeah, they're, they're, they're 4-0. And then it is I a, looked at and it. And then it is a road <laughs> matchup. It is a revenge game with the Denver Broncos. Then it's the Chargers, and then it's the Colts. Yeah. And it's like – And Chargers at home. Yeah, no, I, I the, looked at it. The Steelers starting the season at 4-0. I know. I know. Seems – that's just – It's not impossible. Pretty good odds. It's not impossible. Um. Meanwhile, everybody else's opening schedule stinks. All right. Uh, that is going to do it for today's divisional matchup show. A reminder, ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to get into the UDK or the UDK Plus right now and uh, plug in your roster, get a draft grade, check out the tiered rankings, the sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values. Uh, Thursday, we're going to cover the AFC South, so join us for that and the latest news. I'm sure we'll have a good quick question on there as well. For Andy sitting in Mike's seat and Mike sitting in Andy's seat and Jason Moore and Al Borland and Papa Josh, we say farewell. Enjoy the day. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.